Hey guys, welcome back. Jean Bernard Leon Foucault, a legendary French physicist who is best known for the demonstration of his focal pendulum. Later, he named it as gyroscope, which is a Greek word where the gyro stands for to circle and the scope stands for to look. Well, it's nothing but a device with which he explained the world how Earth rotates. So that is going to be our topic today. We'll be looking at what is a gyroscope, how it works, and what are its applications. So today I've got myself a gyroscopic toy. Okay, from a company called Tetco. So let's get to this. Gyroscope typically looks like this. It has a spinning rotor. Okay, it's called a spinning wheel. This is the spin axis and this is the gyroscopic frame. Now, when I suspend this gyroscope, on the stand, it falls. It falls due to the force of gravity. When I suspend it like this, it still falls. I mean, yeah, it just makes no sense. Why does it need to stand without any forces acting on it? Well, but when I spin this thing and suspend it on it like this, it, it would still fall, but it's trying to have some resistance. So I read the instruction manual and now I'm going to spin it real fast. I've used it like more than 100 times. What I learned is you can spin it either in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. It doesn't really matter. What actually matters is how fast the wheel is spinning. The more the fast the wheel is spinning, more stabilized and balanced your gyroscope becomes along its axis. Now that I've pulled this thing, it's already, you know, showing the resistance towards forces that my hand is giving on it. See, now it balances perfectly and it's having an orientation along this axis. As the speed reduces, it wobbles and eventually falls down. This is called angle of precision. So as you could see, when the spinning wheel, when the spin of the spinning wheel reduces, it eventually loses its resistivity towards the force of gravity and falls off. So one more thing about it is you can completely suspend it anywhere as long as the wheel is spinning and it just won't change its orientation until and unless some heavy external force is applied to it. So now that we know how cool a gyroscope is, let's get to the part where we will look at how it actually works. Now, this is where the things are going to get a little bit tricky and complicated, but I've did my very best to put it in the most simplest way possible. You know what, uh, let's just get it in. In order to understand how gyros work, we need to know the difference between acceleration and velocity. Velocity is nothing but the speed of an object in a direction, and acceleration is the change in the velocity of the object. Okay, so this object is now having a moment. Velocity times mass of this object gives you the momentum. When I give force into this object, which is in a linear motion, its momentum changes along that linear direction. But when I do the same thing to a wheel, I'm applying force here, its angular momentum changes. Its angular momentum changes means if I give, if I give more force, its angular momentum increases. So to understand this, we will take the right hand thumb rule. Now I have curved my fingers in such a way in which the wheels are spinning. And my thumb here, it points the direction of the torque. So, the more force I give, the more angular momentum I get. Meaning, the more torque I give, the more angular momentum I get. Okay, so more the torque, more the angular momentum. That's one part. Now let's get to the second part. This is the most crucial part. Okay, this changes almost everything. I'm having a gyroscope which is not spinning and a stand to suspend it. Now I'm suspending this gyroscope on the stand. Let's see what happens. It falls down. Now let's say it's about this direction. It is falling due to force of gravity. Second, yeah. Now the force of gravity here is acting in this direction, meaning it will produce a torque in this direction perpendicular to the force of gravity, which is now facing the camera. Well, let's get into this diagram. This is the force acting on the spinning. This, this here indicates the force acting on the spinning. So more the force, you'll get more angular momentum and a greater torque. Okay. Now. Force of gravity is acting in this direction because gravity always wants to pull the objects down. When force of gravity acting is this, force of gravity he means the force. And that force, when a force is acting, there will be a torque. And that torque will be directly perpendicular to the force acting on that object. So the force is acting in this direction and we have, we have an angular momentum in this direction. And the force of gravity is providing us a torque, which is known as active torque. 
and it is that active torque that keeps this gyro from falling and it helps the gyro to maintain its angle of precision about the vertical axis. Uh, this is the torque produced by gravity and this torque is known as active torque. It is because of this active torque the spinning wheel is able to maintain an angle of precision about this vertical axis. Okay, So that's just how a gyroscope works. I hope you guys understand that. I know it was pretty complicated, but I still hope you guys understand it. If you don't, make sure to leave your doubts in the comment box. So now that you know how a gyroscope works, let's get to the point where it's actually used or applied. Gyros are used in many instruments and devices, ranging from smartphones to aircrafts, boats, and even on the rovers in the Mars. When it comes to smartphones, the smartphones use gyros unlike the conventional ones. Okay, they are MEMS gyros, meaning micro electromechanical systems. These MEMS gyros, they help the smartphone in understanding the direction, in which direction the smartphone is oriented or tilted. These MEMS are nothing but an integrated circuit chip which has both mechanical as well as electrical components that are sized from micrometers to millimeters. That's really small. And iPhone 4 was the very first smartphone to come with an MEMS technology in gyroscope. Kudos to Apple and Steve Jobs. When it comes to aircraft, gyros are used in instruments such as altimeters, vertical speed indicators, air speed indicators, and much more to determine the aircraft's orientation and position in space. And also to make it to trespass through the clouds without a fuss. Okay. Similarly, these gyros are also used in ships and boats, which helps them against the aggressive wave currents and prevents them from tipping off into the sea. All these gyros, they usually spin at a rate of 15,000 to above more than 30,000 RPM. The reason why they spin at this high RPM is because more the RPM, more stable and balanced the aircraft of the ship becomes against the wind or wave currents. Okay. So that's it. If you guys have any doubts or questions, make sure to leave them in the comment box below. Plus, make sure to follow my Instagram handle at Gears and Grease. We'll be posting some cool and fun stuff related to automotives and nothing else. I guess it's bye. Bye bye. See you guys in the next video.